What's going on Port fans, welcome back to another video on the channel and today we're going to be reviewing round 21, Port Adelaide versus Geelong, a two goal loss at GMHBA Stadium in an unfortunate circumstance of uh, a, a young side, an experienced side, probably not our best side, um, getting beaten by a Geelong outfit that was definitely uh, a little bit better on the night and unfortunately that's our top two spot gone at this stage and with three rounds to go it's looking very unlikely that we could possibly claim that back with uh, how the well how the D's and the Lions are going to have their fixture towards the back end of the year so a lot to play out still but let's just review this game and see what we could take out from it. This probably won't be a very long review because um, I just feel like it's pretty much the same factors every single week. This week in particular, it was injuries and illness that caused havoc on our side. Um, and just unfortunately, the inexperience in our team just couldn't get the job done. Um, and the Geelong outfit that was, you know, they were being Geelong in Geelong effectively, they were just good enough to get the job done. And I honestly believe if we had the players that we lost late, even Finlayson and Bergman would have made a two-goal difference. Um, and obviously, even in the game, uh, um, McKenzie gets injured, probably gone for the season. Marshall can nearly concuss himself in a clumsy way. Um, came back on the ground in the end, but just these little things just eventuated. Like at one stage, we had Ollie Henry and his opponent was Riley Bonner. Like, that's how desperate you're getting. Um, Jonas on Cameron was just never going to work. We didn't have a tall defender. Burton, I thought, was really, really good down back. His intercept work was fantastic and played a really, really good game. Um, and it was good to see that he found a bit of form again, I thought. Um, and then you look at the midfield. Rosie, Butters, Jason Horn, francis they were exceptional. Uh, I thought even Boak was really good in and around the half-forward line, um, kicking a snag as well. So... The players that were there definitely stood up and tried to get us across the line. Rioli kicked four goals. Pau Pepper was in and out of the game. You know, it was bits and pieces. Just wasn't good enough. Um, and I'm not... This is actually one of those losses I'm not going to look at and go, all right, this is toys out the cot um, and throw everything at, at the coach or throw everything at the football club. I'm probably going to move on from it, really, and just focus on the last three games because... At the end of the day, with the talent we had on the ground, talent we had out of the ground, and the effort we put in, I think I'll, I'll, the feedback from Port fans is, I think if this was a loss that happened isolated um, a few weeks, if this was the Carlton loss where we lost everyone um, and then we came back and then kept winning, you could probably be content with the result. Because this is the fourth loss in a row, fans are definitely feeling that edge and, and that, um, that doubt in the season, but you still got to look at it as we've we've lost so many players coming out of this side for this week's game. We were just very little chance of winning this. I know they didn't have Hawkins and Blitzels, but they still had a very strong outfit. Um, and I just think around the ground that inexperience that we had definitely came into fruition and and just couldn't couldn't work at GMHBA. It's a daunting task to go there and. Um, yeah, I think being now the fourth loss in a row, it definitely hurts and we're definitely going to have to be on the back foot to keep um, keep our grind going for top two. I do want to shout out uh, Dante Vizentini. He was exceptional. His work rate, his um, effort at the ball, or effort around the contest, his work around the ground, really, really impressive. And I really think he's got a, little, a bright little future ahead of him, especially now that Lysette's gone in for surgery um, and he's going to have, I reckon, Dante's audition is the next three rounds. You know, he'll play against GWS, Fremantle, and Richmond. He's going to be playing against Briggs, Darcy, and um, Nankervis. What a three to come up against and really try and prove yourself as a ruckman for the future for Port Adelaide. Had 25 hitouts, um, worked around the ground really, really well. Um, I think he's, he's really impressive because his ball work on the ground is really exceptional. Um, he's got a good leg on him as well and got a good grab. I think... Obviously, he's going to get caught out in stages, but to see a lot of the positive feedback from the Port fans across the socials, um, I thought was really impressive um, that he's made an impact in his third game. And um, I'm, I'm really impressed with the way he's worked about things. I had Riley O'Brien last week. I thought he was content. He was really 
satisfying for me. Nothing to be too of a concern. And come up against, come up against Stanley this week. And again, just do his task and do his job really, really well. Playing a man-on-man Ruckman game, which is... You don't see that a lot, though. You see a lot of the experienced Ruckman pan off and try and be that interceptor and, and that man behind the ball. He was that real one-on-one Ruckman, and, and I really like that. You know, stick with your man. You've got one job. Win the tap. Help your teammates out and make sure you get first hands to your midfielders. And he did that um, on multiple occasions. So well done, Dante. I'm really, really impressed with the way he went about things. There's been a lot of talk about uh, the umpiring and Ken Hinckley's post-game press conference about not being able to touch on the fact that the umpiring was pretty poor. From what I watched, um, I, I do think you look at the start of the game, it was very free-flowing and then became a contested game after that. Once the contested game started to come into things, the umpires to have started to have their say. Definitely went more of a Geelong route, but I'm not going to blame the umpires for the loss. We had multiple chances in our last quarter. The outs, as I said, definitely had an effect on the game. Um, and I think overall, it's a package loss, isn't it? It's just one of those things where a bit here, a bit here, and a bit here all culminate together, and that's why we lost the game. The contested possessions, as Ken said in the post-game press conference, were... Negative 18 for Port, 14 free kicks was the difference in the end. Okay, but then again, a couple of drop marks, easy set shots on goal. Todd Marshall passing off to Horn Francis late in the last quarter to have a shot. When you're a big, tall key forward, Toddy, take the moment. I've always said that about key forwards, and we've said it all the way through Marshall's career. He's got to learn to take those moments. He's lost a bit of touch, a bit of confidence. He was doing it last year, having a great... Um, year and you know he found himself he knew he was the number one forward so he took those moments and then this year he's gone back to his ways a little bit which have definitely hurt him and his confidence and it's probably affecting our scoreboard scoring ability um, and putting pressure on the scoreboard um, but I still think uh, our pressure up forward's been good Pow Pepper McEntee was um, a little bit better and Rioli obviously kicking the goals as well which is really impressive so in conclusion I'm, I'm not going to harp on the negatives too much but I do feel like there was a, a better effort. There was a lot of positivity to come out of uh, the Geelong game that, for me, sort of settles myself a bit. I'm like, okay, we get our players back now. Everyone that was out this week, Finlayson, Bergman, I think Dixon will come back. Um, you know, Obviously, Aaliyah and Jones are going to come back as well. It settles me a bit to know that I think our mindset's just going to click now. And that's my prediction. I think we click... We win the last three. We go into the um, final series with a bit of momentum again. And that's all we need. We just need a bit of momentum. This season's wide open and it's almost there, Port fans. I'm going to stick fat for a little bit longer. I think if we lose to DWS next week, it's a lot It's a lot more concerning. But to think our losses have come against a showdown, um, Collingwood, Geelong, in Geelong, and then obviously Carlton, who have been in good touch. So... Put that as a package. I hate to lose four in a row after a big streak, but I think it will come back. And that's what I'm hoping for. And that's what I expect. I expect a response. Let me know in the comments below, Port fans, your thoughts on the game. Um, as I said, four in a row is not great when you're losing, but still in the top four. Still a lot of positivity to come out of it. Um, and hopefully now we turn this into three wins going into the back end of the year. We solidify ourselves back as a contender and making sure that we get the job done. Because you just never know. You just never, never know. But um, hopefully it's a quick turnaround with a win soon because I'm starving of a win for Port. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content to come your way. My name's Anthony, and as always, come the pair.